to the Camels with Hammer show, and I am absolutely delighted to have on the show today uh, Jerry DeWitt, the first graduate of the Clergy Project, an organization of um, uh, a clergy who are on their way to confessing that they are atheists and uh, that they have become atheists while in the in the ministry. They didn't deceptively infiltrate the ministry. Uh, in order to uh, do something devious, um, as, as some want to accuse them of. Uh, these are people who are very earnest and sincere and uh, have want, find themselves in a, a very uh, difficult situation of having to, uh, you know, uh, find that, they're, that, that, that they're, their convictions, their beliefs no longer match their vocation. And so Jerry is a, a very brave man who is following his conscience uh, out into the void and uh, not not knowing what what his future was going to be, uh, but just knowing he had to uh, be true to what he thought was true. And so uh, Jerry's got a lot going on. He's the author of a new book called Hope After Faith, which is coming out June twenty third, twenty fifth, twenty fifth, twenty fifth, twenty fifth. And he is uh, and and he's going to start a secular service. He's going to do a secular service in Louisiana. His goal is to create a secular ministry and be uh, an atheist preacher. Would you say that? <laughs> That's close enough. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, let's just start at the top, Jerry. I want to, I want to probe you philosophically uh, and and ask slightly different questions than others have asked you. I think your story is fascinating, but I'd like to ask the philo the philosophy behind it. And um, and what I what I'm what I'm interested in is is what you see. Uh, as 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 the value of being an atheist uh, or a preacher as an atheist, like what does that mean? Um, a lot of a lot of atheists are um, squeamish about the idea of preaching, and there seems to be something that we'd be playing into some stereotypes and some simplistic categorizations. Atheists are tr constantly trying to get away from the idea that atheism is just a religion too. So so right. where does it where does an atheist preacher fit in? to what it means to be an atheist and what, what we're going to do and how we're going to shake that charge that we're just like religious people in, in the ways we're trying to criticize. What would you say to that? Well, yeah, there, there's a couple important points there. One is, um, I, I, I don't know if you can say that there's meaning for an atheist preacher. I think the preacher, whether we like it or not, has played a role and does play a role within our the makeup of our culture, especially in the deep south. So that is a that's an archetype that already exists and that we already know how to benefit from and function with. So so it's not so much about being an atheist preacher as it is being a preacher who is an atheist. I don't I don't think we can make the case that that atheist or atheism needs a preacher, needs religion, needs those same structures. It just so happens that those structures do exist. They um they're structures that we that we know how to function with and that we can take advantage of. So it's really more about people people who have moved into the secular philosophy being able to connect and stay connected with their culture. That's mm. that's really what it comes down to. So so as far as atheism, you know, for me, I try to. I know it's real tricky these days. You know, terminologies are, you know, they're they're like landmines. They're they're truly like social landmines. You're you're walking out through the new beautiful landscape of the secular movement, thinking that you can just run footloose and fancy free. Your hair blowing in the air. You know, the sun shining in your face, and everything's fine, and the next thing you know, your right foot lands on one of these damn words that freaks everybody out, <laughs> and boom, <laughs> it's over, you know. <laughs> and so, so I know that's what's going on, and, and I hate that. I hate that that's the case, but, but that's, that is the reality. So mm -hmm. I try to be very, very particular about what atheism is and is not, you know. And I, I'm the first one that probably messes it up and talks about the atheist movement, and the secular movement. But atheism is simply just not having a belief in a divinity, in supernatural, you know, in those things. So, so I like to put it the other way around. It's not, it's not an atheist preacher. It's a preacher who happens to be an atheist. 
Okay, so then what does a preacher <laughs> who happens to be an atheist preach about? Yeah, like, oh, and, and, and so, okay, so then you go the next step, okay? So when I started this journey, my ultimate desire was, was to consider myself a humanist and to be known as a humanist. That was, that was what I was really, that was my original intention. But, you know, here I came with my preacher hair and my preacher jacket, my preacher mannerisms, and, you know, I start touring the country, and people are like, you know, what are you really up to? You know, what do you really believe? Because there's a lot of different types of humanists, you know, not just in the world, but throughout history. And so I had to start using the word atheist more and more. So there, you know, was a distinction and a clarification about where I was now at in my thoughts. So what an atheist preacher will preach about is really humanistic values. And so when I see preaching, I see it more as a communication style, um, a cultural mean that exists in you know certain segments of our society that people are accustomed to, people know how to deal with. Obviously, because of the abuse that people have received in certain situations, certain religious situations, they hate me. They they hate the way I sound whenever I'm up preaching. You know, it turns them off. It freaks them out. Um, and, and there's all these crazy ideas out there that, you know, preachers have this, this magical ability to hypnotize the entire congregation and make them all give a, all their money up and all those things. But, you know, obviously, if that was true, I wouldn't be living where I'm living right now, you know. So, so God, it's, it's just complicated. But what we do know is that life can be difficult, and together we're better. And so if I have a particular communication style, that a certain segment of the social, you know, of the secular movement can appreciate, then me and many others, we, we need to use those skills in order to uh, to make to make life better. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what it is. You know, you're you're going to preach humanistic messages. It's, it's that's great. It. Yeah, like when you talk about the hypnotism effect, because yeah. I think I think that my concern. Is uh, that I worry about? Um, I worry about people changing their minds because of the emotional experience. It's very rousing to hear you preach, right. uh, rather than the rational argument. And like as a philosophy professor, my goal is to walk people through a dialectical argument, help them develop their ideas, rather than uh, preach. But right. but there's a part of me which is starting to think that there's something of a denial of the body that atheists can risk because there's a I certain sense in which they're falling into the old pattern that we're a disembodied soul and there's just something about the body and an experience in the body that that should be denied and so like like so 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 whereas with sex they're okay with yes we should got to reclaim the body and it's okay and it's not animal but but if it's a matter of chanting together and ritual or uh, movement together and singing and dancing and getting in concert with one another as a community or being roused by rhetoric vi right. uh, viscerally and physically, then the atheists, uh, there, there's a real allergy to that. That, 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 may be, that may be a denial of our bodily selves and how our bodily selves engage with each other and with truth. Preach it, brother. Preach it. <laughs> I, I, I honestly could not agree more. Yeah. It, it obviously takes a balance. But as human beings, particularly culturally, we do not want to strive for the balance. Because right. being balanced is difficult. It is extremely hard. It is laborious. We don't want to be balanced. We want to be able to draw a line in the sand and say you're Republican, you're Democrat, you're left, you're right, you're conservative, you're liberal. You're religious, you're non-religious, you're atheist, you're sacred, you're whatever. Uh, and life's just not that simple. Life is never going to be that simple. So ever so often, you know, somebody, and, and it's not just me, there's a lot of other people on this beautiful planet that are doing something similar, mm -hmm. we have to step out and say we're going to put forth just a little extra effort to try to find the balance. You know, Great. we're going to promote science. We're going to promote reason. We're going to promote humanistic values. And yes, we're going to do it sometimes in a sing-song way that makes people want to clap or makes people, you know, want to stand up and cheer or whatever. And we're going to try to strike the balance. You know, I, I guess, I guess because I grew up in it, I, I'm not near as worried. 
obviously there are cults. I've been involved in cults. Obviously there are there are cultish powers that of persuasion that do affect people. There's no doubt about it. But by and large, I can tell you from being a pastor that 99.9% of the congregation, 99.9% .9 of the time, no matter how enthusiastic they get during your message, when they drive off, they're going to do what the hell they want to do anyway. <laughs> that's just human beings, you know. That's just the way we are. And sure. and you you know you, you watch you watch something on television, you watch a, an advertisement about giving charity to starving children in Africa or helping you know innocent animals get out of you know out of horrible kennels, and you're moved by it for 35 seconds, and then your show comes back on. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's not as easy to hypnotize people as I think sometimes we're led to believe in the secular movement. And so, you know, maybe I'll be wrong, and maybe I'll have this gigantic, huge cult following, that, you know, 10 years from now and own half the world and take over the world. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, but I'll try to be a benevolent dictator. <laughs> well, so but, you know, this really this really brings up a thought to me and and as you talked about uh having people perceive you as a shtick on the one hand, um yeah. and also as as sort of a perpetuator of something devious in general. Um, you know, now I know that the I know that you you express a tremendous amount of gratitude for the way that the community has welcomed you. Absolutely, very much so. And so we're definitely acknowledging that um, sure. uh, uh, because you know I, I mean I know that the ex preachers sometimes might fear that the atheists will be more distrustful of them than they are, but I wonder if part of it uh, when you mention culture is whether or not there is a cultural divide here. And whether or not this is something of a discrimination against people of a southern background with a southern way, I mean, like, and 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 whether or not that's part of what uh, the sensitivity we need to have, and and the, and the people need to be alert to. I I think I think that's a good thing to look into. You know, I I obviously don't have any statistics, and I don't I don't know enough about what other people are thinking to, to make a judgment on that, but I know that people are real quick to say, well, he's uneducated. You know, well, yeah, and I'm short and overweight, too. You know, I mean, what else do you want to think about? You know, I'm doing the best I can. And, and, and sometimes I do think that, you know, that's, that's referencing towards a Deep South, you know, residency. You know, well, in the Deep South, you know, you have to just overlook them. They've never seen a textbook, you know, type of, of thing. But but it also goes the other way, okay? In the Deep South, we're also uh, can be suspicious of, of atheism being almost nothing more than uh, an invasion of Ivy Leaguers. Right. You know, who are coming down from the Northeast to tell us, you know, how we're supposed to live and how we're supposed to look at things. Yeah, you froze. Um, uh, is that just on my end that you froze? Let's see here. Let me uh, resume here. 